you have just entered one of the world's most amazing food halls. We're in Philadelphia at the Reading Terminal Market, which has been in business for 126 years. 100,000 Philadelphians and tourists pass through the Reading Market every week enjoying its exceptional products, history, and people. Shopping and dining are a pleasure in this inviting and unique atmosphere. A trip to Philadelphia would not be complete without stopping in here and having a meal. The market's located in the heart of town at 12th and Arch Streets in Center City. Just two blocks from City Hall and Market Street. Right in downtown, it's easy to find, yet slightly hidden away so you have to look for it. A landmark is the adjacent convention center, which is also upstairs in what had been the train station. It figures this old market has a fascinating history and you're going to learn all about it while we enjoy these delightful scenes. Naturally, some of these food vendors and restaurants have become very famous, remaining at this location for many decades. We had a chance to talk with a worker at Denix, one of the most popular and oldest eateries in the market. So, tell me about Denix. Um, so, we're Denix. We are a roast pork and roast beef restaurant. We serve sandwiches here in Philadelphia. Um, we've been around since 1954. We've been selling sandwiches. This is a fourth generation business. It started as a butcher shop in South Philly back in the early 1900s. Um, we've been here in the Red Internal Market for almost 40 years now. And how about this market? So, the market just celebrated its 125th anniversary last year. Um, it used to be a train station before it was what it is today, uh, with food stalls all around it. it. used to ship food out along the Reading Railroad. So it's the busiest food market in the city? For sure, yeah. Um, it's one of the most um, visited places in the city each year. Uh-huh. And what kind of foods? All sorts of foods. Um, so I think currently it has 81 vendors, all different cuisines, uh, lots of different merchants. So there are some food purveyors, there are some just dry goods or other types of goods, uh, but the majority is restaurants in here. Uh huh. So lunch hour is your busy time? Yes. Uh, <laughs> primarily, this is a lunch place. It's not just a sandwich, it's almost more of a meal. Many people eat it with a knife and fork. Delicious. The Travel Channel featured Dinix in one of their segments and proclaimed that Dinix makes the best sandwich in the country. Another nice feature of Dinix is they have a large luncheon counter with seats. You can sit down at the long wraparound counter or takeout. You can order food to go. Place your order at the counter and sit down anywhere you wish. You'll find that the service here is always very fast. It might only take them a few minutes to make your sandwich and you're on your way. Many other counters have seating and there is a large central communal seating area, which is important because some food counters don't have any seats. They're strictly takeout. And the seating turns over pretty quickly, so if there's nothing available, just wait for a minute or two and somebody will be leaving probably they do get quite busy at the lunch hour. So for visitors, a good strategy is come slightly before or after the lunch hour peak. So if you get here at 11 a.m. or 1.30 or 2 in the afternoon, you'll have a much better chance of getting a seat. And you're showing consideration for the many locals who eat there during their brief lunch break. Another good strategy when you get here is you might want to walk around and take a real good look at all of the different stands and restaurants and foods that are available before you just quickly pick one and sit down and eat. You'll be amazed at the great variety and you'll work up a nice appetite walking up and down these many aisles. You're welcome to look everywhere, of course. And if you'd like some guidance, you can actually sign up for a Taste of Philly food tour that's offered on Wednesday mornings and Saturday mornings at 10 o'clock by a prepaid reservation that you can make on their website. You'll have a guide for 75 entertaining minutes and you'll learn some fun history. You'll even get a few snacks included along the way. You'll find out where Philadelphia brand cream cheese really comes from and learn the proper way to order a cheesesteak. The management organization that runs the market 
gives a general preference when they're picking a new vendor to fill the space with growers and purveyors of the local and regional foods. And they also require owners to be actively involved in the management and operation of the business within the market. In addition to the wonderful cooked foods in the restaurant, there's a wide variety of other kinds of merchandise available for sale here and lots of fresh produce. The Pennsylvania General Store specializes in the best Pennsylvania-made products. It opened up in 1987 as a lunchbox catering business using the foods of the Reading Terminal Market and delivering to offices and warehouses in the surrounding area, but they have greatly expanded their focus. They've got cookies, hand-dipped chocolate-covered pretzels, tray after tray of truffles, chocolates, and caramels made by Pennsylvania's premier chocolatiers. They also carry locally roasted coffee, Pennsylvania Dutch preserves and honey, and handicrafts like ceramics, postcards, quilts, and handmade goods from young Philly artisans. You can assemble a gift basket of items on their website, and they will ship it far and wide with their mail order business. A large corner of the market is dedicated to fresh fruits, vegetables, and organic produce grown in local farms, some of it grown in Lancaster County by the Amish, who also play a big role in some of the other booths here in the market with their bakeries and other fine foods. This produce section is a big favorite among local chefs from nearby restaurants who stop by every day. Open-air markets flourished in Philadelphia since its founding hundreds of years ago. But in 1859, city officials bowed to public pressure and dismantled the outdoor markets, citing noise, congestion, disease, and other safety and sanitary reasons. This prompted two small indoor markets to open at this location in 1860, which about 40 years later became the foundation of the Reading Terminal Market. A large train terminal was built on this location by the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad Company, opening their new terminal for train service in 1893. At the same time, this Reading Terminal Market opened for business, 1893. The street level market reverberated with the sounds of trains rumbling overhead with the terminal up above, servicing the elevated train tracks. Right away in its first few decades, the Reading Terminal Market was a big success. There were 380 merchants in its first year of operation, and the market had nearly full occupancy for the following 60 years. Business flourished with the development of a free delivery service of food to customers' homes, something like Amazon Prime today. Boys called Market Brats carried small orders to in-town customers, often on bicycle. They expanded this delivery service using the trains to bring goods to nearby towns. By 1935, the market had 400 telephone operators to take call-in orders. People living near train stations served by the railroad called in orders to the market, and grocery orders were placed in baskets on trains bound for their town and held at the station for pickup. It was the perfect location for easily receiving and shipping goods. Delivery trucks allowed the market to provide even more home distribution to 60 suburban towns as well as seaside resorts along the Jersey Shore. However, the railroad company went bankrupt in 1976, leaving the market without its parent company, and business suffered. This brought on hard times. The roof started leaking, the building deteriorated, and many merchants left. Train service ended in 1984 when the city's commuter rail system was rerouted to bypass the terminal. But the situation quickly improved. By the early 1980s, the reawakening of Philadelphia's commercial center and a growing interest in artisanal food drew a new generation of shoppers to the market. Then in 1985, train service began again with rail and subways opening up underneath the market at the Market East Station. A major breakthrough happened in 1993 when the adjacent Pennsylvania Convention Center opened and brought new customers to the market. Reading Terminal's former train shed upstairs became part of the Convention Center, and the Convention Authority secured $30 million in public funding to upgrade the market's infrastructure and freshen up the drab interior. 
The market has been thriving ever since. Today, the Reading Terminal Market is one of the nation's most successful public markets with 80 independent small businesses offering an array of fresh and prepared foods, lunch counters, and places to eat and shop. The market offers a tremendous variety of items, fresh produce, meats, fish, eggs, poultry, artisan cheese, groceries, ice cream, flowers, specialty and ethnic foods, baked goods, handmade crafts, books, jewelry, clothing, and more. The market is once again the gastronomic bazaar that its original planners had envisioned, rescued from near oblivion to become perhaps the finest food market in the country. Of course, the market has a detailed website in which they list all of the different vendors and provide a lot of information about what's for sale, what's on offer. And also on the website, they have a mission statement which contains the following ideals. To preserve the architectural and historical character and function of the Reading Terminal Market as an urban farmer's market. To provide a wide variety of produce, meat, fish, bakery and dairy products and other raw and prepared food brought to a public market in the center of the city by farmers, growers, producers and chefs to maintain an environment that recognizes and celebrates the diversity of our citizens and fosters their interaction, to strengthen the historic link and mutual dependency of our rural and urban communities. Well, are you hungry yet? This is a good time to end so you can go get yourself some food after watching all of these delicious items passing by. We frequently upload new movies, so please subscribe to our channel and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up and we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.